Welcome back, welcome back, welcome back to episode 35 of the Sharpshooters Podcast. I am your humble and gracious host, Mr. Brinsky Sharp, aka Mr. B Sharp on the ones and twos and the threes and the fours and the fives and the six and all that good stuff. Uh we got my guys in the building tonight, and actually, we have a very, very special guest on the show today. But before I bring them on, well, there they go. But uh, appreciate everybody for uh, subscribing to the channel and showing love. Still on the road to 500 subscribers. And we got a, a special show for you. But the guys are up here. First, Mr. H-Town legend himself with the Charlie Conway Mighty Ducks jersey. My boy that. DeHaven. What's going on, bro? Yeah. Uh, I, I still... Man, that jersey fire. I don't care, man. I'm jealous I ain't got it. I love this jersey, bro. Yeah. And then he got the C on there as a captain. <laughs> my, my big dog, my cousin, Mr. Shoemaker, Mr. Entrepreneur, Mr. Q Dog himself, Mr. Jason Walker. My dog, what's going on? And you on mute. <laughs> Good and on mute. What up, fellas? <laughs> oh, my main man from Tuskegee, Alabama, but stay in Birmingham. The big dog himself taking all the pictures, Mr. Party Promoter, Mr. Tailgate King. My big dog, Tess, what's going on? What's up, fellas? What's up? <laughs> really good. Really good. And ladies and gentlemen, certainly not least, one of my favorite, favorite, favorite people for a long time. Been having me laughing and even had me sad one or two many occasions on these Alabama fan reactions after the game. One of the my favorite people out of Alabama, Quint Frat brother. Quint couldn't be on the show tonight, but I wish he could have. Straight out of Birmingham, Alabama. By the way, of Opelika, one of the funniest people out there, Mister Funny Man, ladies and gentlemen. What it do? What it do? What's up, y'all? What's, what's going on, oh, brother? What's up, what's up? Oh yeah, man. Yeah, I'm sorry Lazy. I brought a special guest with me, man. Then Pimple just pop up like once a <laughs> yeah, year. Oh, no, man. <laughs> it, is all good. it is all good, man. I just appreciate you uh, joining the show out of your busy schedule. Yeah, man. Uh, yeah. No, I appreciate y'all having me, man. Let's have some fun in the middle of a tour, but it's always good for me to sit down and talk when I'm at home, like during the middle of the week. And then I get get up out of here, head to Memphis and a few other cities and a few. How many? How many more uh, tour days you got? Yeah, one, two, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm, no, I'm looking at the actual schedule. <laughs> oh, about, 10, about ten more. Anyway, yeah. we definitely uh gonna shout out that. Make sure y'all go support, man. Real good brother. Appreciate and it. And hopefully, you uh didn't do Birmingham yet, did you? Nah, I ain't gonna do Birmingham on this one. Uh, mm -hmm. Birmingham, you know, I live here, so yeah, uh, I just do like a lot of open mics and different small shows when I'm getting ready to get on the road in Birmingham. So Birmingham I get to see all the jokes, like at the beginning, like they get to decide who, <laughs> which one gonna make the cut. And when I tell one, and then it'd be crooked. So, right, yeah, <laughs> taking that one on the road, Jack. Yeah. it is all good. Like I said, man, y'all continue to support them, man. But without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, y'all already know, last week we were talking about the NFL draft and me as uh, Washington Commanders. I still hate that name. I hate that name with a passion. Can we go back to anything? We could have been the Red Wolves, man. But they let me down. But a few of the guys were hating on the show last week. Saying that we weren't gonna draft Jaden Daniels, future Super Bowl winning <laughs> quarterback Jaden Daniels, but we got him. 
And uh, of course, Kayla Williams went number one. So I just want to know um, how y'all teams did or whatnot. Any one of y'all can go. Just tell me uh, what was y'all surprise of the draft to start off with. What was the biggest surprise? It doesn't matter what team or what pick. Well, you know, the biggest surprise was Michael Penix. By far, I think that's I think that's the one that kind of jumps off off the page of everybody because you just gave a guy 120 million or whatever, and then you double back and and jump in Michael Penix, which it caught me off guard. And I'm thinking, well, maybe Kirk Cousins isn't recovering as fast as they think he's going to recover, or they don't believe in the next couple of draft classes, and they're just going to go ahead and and buy in now. But it 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 just doesn't make sense to me at this point. Oh, I, I kind of feel different about it a little bit, but I'm gonna wait to the end. I'm gonna just see what everybody else say. Yeah, I think it, I think it was Michael Penix too. That Michael Penix pick kind of came out of left field. I don't know. Josh said it on the show before the draft. It was about two weeks before the draft. We had a pod, and he a Falcons fan, and he was like, "I think we're gonna get Michael Penix." Mm-hmm. We all kind of looked at him like, uh. But I mean, apparently he knew something that we didn't know. I don't know how long Kirk Cousins signed for. His deal is what three years, maybe. I would think mm-hmm. one eighty for five, I think. What was that guarantee? Four. That guarantee no, was crazy. five years. Man. It's it's four or five. Yeah, so maybe this is a succession plan. You know, I don't know. Uh, maybe like they don't believe in Kirk Cousins. Uh, but they got two starting quarterbacks now. <laughs> I don't know. I, I think everybody wanted them to see them go uh, offensive line or something like that. Uh, but yeah, to go get Michael Penix is probably the only really surprise in the first round that I thought. I, nobody moved up crazy to get no crazy picks for real, for real. Uh, but yeah, that was that was it for me. It was Michael Penix. As far as surprise. I think that Michael Penix move is smart, man, because if uh, they they already said if uh, Mike didn't go to Atlanta, he was definitely gonna go to Minnesota. So it's like you know, hey, you gotta you gotta go on and grab him, man, while he there. A lot of people thought he was gonna fall in the draft. Obviously, that didn't happen. There was a lot of quarterbacks that went in this first round. Penix just happened to fall into Atlanta hands. I think it's a smart move. Uh, you know, he don't have to get thrown out there right away, you know, uh, save him until something big happens. We already know, uh, Kirk Cousins history, man. So, you know, I don't, I don't see nothing wrong with it. It's just like how Green Bay got Jordan Love a few years back in the first round, same type of move. They still had Aaron Rodgers on the squad and everything like that, but they went with a quarterback in the first round. People called him crazy back then. People looking at Atlanta a little crazy right now. It may just work out in the long run. So, you know, I think everybody in Atlanta is pretty excited, man, because everybody was pretty bummed out about that uh, Kirk Cousins signing. We felt like he got too much money for that, uh, you know, for that pickup. So, you know, we just got to see what happens, man. I might be the only one that wasn't, like, really surprised, like, in the NFL – you you're not gonna get where you need to get without a quarterback, and I think Atlanta has been without a quarterback. I mean, Matt Ryan to me he was legit, but I'm a Saints fan, so I don't, you know I feel how I feel <laughs> about him. Um, but if you think about it, it really makes a lot of sense. Yeah, Kirk got that big deal for four years, um, but you know if they wanted a season quarterback, they was gonna have to to pony up for him, and they had to. So now you got a four-year deal with all that guaranteed money, but the rookie the rookie deals as it's set up by the uh, NFLPA right now is four mm-hmm. years. So as soon as Kirk contract is up, Penance can come right on in there, or he can you know negotiate his contract and he already be you know ingratiated into the system, uh, into the city and all that. So to me, it actually made quite a bit of sense, and it was some good quarterbacks in this draft. How the hell we end up with Spencer Rattler ass? I don't know, but oh my god, <laughs> maybe maybe he'll right. turn out to be something. But I, I ain't seen it through his college years yet. I I've seen flashes, but yeah, yeah. I don't I don't know when it comes to NFL time, man. 
when they they be trying to make somebody into something that they're not like we seen a sample size of them in college like they did the same thing with Deshaun in the Mitch Trubisky draft like what did you see in Mitch Trubisky to make you think that he's better than Deshaun I'll never let that go because the minute the Bears uh drafted him they got three to four years before they get fired and in three or four years they got fired because it still doesn't make any sense now I think this Kayla Williams thing makes up for all that, but it's still uh to be determined. But of course, Michael Penis was uh easily the biggest surprise to me. But all I know how Atlanta fans feel, and I know I get them a hard time. I think everybody gives them a hard time after that 28 to 3 Super Bowl that they blew and messed up my boy Julio's Super Bowl ring. Cowards. But um if Michael Penn is turning into a Hall of Fame uh, quarterback, they're going to forget all about this. So he can go one or two ways. Either he's going to be that guy or he ain't going to be that guy. So yeah, I think it's just to be determined. So we'll see what will happen. Now, think, go ahead. Go ahead. Now, you think it take that long? You think it take like the three or four years before we it, see Penix it, on the field? It's not going to take that long. I give it you two years so? at, at the max, at the max. You might see Penix on the field by the end of Unless. The what are y'all basing on? I mean, barring injury. Bar injury fans? Bar injury. I mean, I think injury is obvious. If, if, if something happens to Kirk Cousins, I don't, there's nobody Kirk else. 36, man. Yeah. yeah. Either way, it, Kirk, it, Cousins, Kirk Cousins not going to be sleeping well. And Penix, and Penix is like what? Penix is like 24 years old. 23, 20, 24, yeah, 24, 23, something yeah. like yeah, that. Yeah, so you really don't – you can't you can't really sit him – Behind nobody. You can get a long lifespan out of a quarterback nowadays. Man, I'm Penix, not, I'm not. But but you everybody forgetting Penix had multiple ACL injuries at Indiana. Yeah, yes, like he's been busted up. Yeah. You got you got to factor in all that. That's why I think him sitting down and learning uh game a little bit, getting more healthier. I think that will help him instead of him jumping into that fire. But Atlanta got them weapons, and I believe Kirk Cousins is going to definitely use those weapons to his true. advantage. Cause he, he's I, coming up an injury too, though. Yeah. Mm-hmm. See, that's what I'm saying. It's 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 still a win win for Atlanta. That's why I say it, just got to see how it pans out. Because I think uh, Atlanta, if I'm not mistaken, Atlanta's GM. I know he used to be with y'all, funny man. I, I don't yeah. know if he was the uh, y'all GM or he was some. Yeah, he had another. He was management, but not. Yeah, him. yeah. But, but, but he, but he was a big part of a lot of those Saints players being there. So he, he mm-hmm. has an eye for players. So if, especially what the Haven was saying, if Minnesota was going to draft him anyway, I think Atlanta was smart to just go ahead and get him. Because he wasn't going to be there later. If you knew you can get him later, then of course you're going to get him later. But they knew something that we didn't know. So we'll just see how it turns out. Just got to. Yeah, that, just that, those, uh, those NFL rooms, tricky, man, because, you know, those war rooms at the draft, because it's like, do you draft best available? Do you draft need? You know, it, it's a lot that go into it. So it was a bold, bold move for them. They put their reputations on the line with this uh, Penix pick, so sure. we're gonna see. I agree. You you can look at it like um, off the well, top of my head, pick. yeah. The off, off the top of my head, like picks that folks question at the time, but they don't question no more. Like when they took Donovan McNabb over Ricky Williams, and you seen how the Philadelphia fans booed, but then it was just like too soon no, with we, that Ricky Williams stuff, man. Too soon. <laughs> too soon. Oh man, and make it so bad. Uh, me and you and Jason being Alabama fans, this one guy up here is a big Texas fan. Trust me, man, he's been giving us a hard time all year. That's why I was like, one of those videos that you made, man. Mm-hmm. We'll get on that later, man. You st- nah, I, got, I got nothing against take my uh, my little cuz down there on the D line, and um, hell, y'all went home same night we did, so we. Yeah, I, I gave him a little <laughs> shout out in the video because you know that was for my cuz and just mm-hmm. you know the fact that they was in the same boat that we in. Yeah, shout out to Michael Penis for taking care of business. <laughs> Thank God, and they almost blew it that game. But for all 
Okay, I know. Since you just said uh, you're a Saints fan, I know Jason is a Ravens fan. I know DeHaven is a Houston Texans fan. His team doing the damn thing this all season. Tez, I forgot your team just that quick. Oh, 49ers, the 49ers. Damn, man, my team. Don't worry, we on the come up. But what it, no, what would right. every every last one of y'all, what would y'all give y'all overall draft and what's y'all best pick out the draft for y'all team? I give them um I, th- I think we about a B B plus uh like I said the the Spencer Rattler pick is kind of up in the air uh the fact that we got Kool Aid and he can learn from uh from them you know them corners mm. that we do have good oh. things. Yeah, that that should be fuel for him to do some good things. We got uh your linebacker out of Texas forward, and we locked in two good old tackles. So I'm I'm pleased. And plus we ain't got no damn money, so we get what we can get. We ain't yeah. had no money in a minute. It'd be like that. <laughs> y'all been good for so long, but at the same time, y'all had Drew Brees and a lot of yeah. a lot. A lot we of had like work. three, four consecutive seven, nine seasons. <laughs> yeah, but I'm just saying, like when y'all had them heartbroken losses in the uh, playoffs, man, I, I was like, damn, I don't we, even hate y'all, the, man. We the kings of finding new ways, Lou. Mm-hmm. Whether it was the Minnesota <laughs> Hail Mary, the no call with the Rams, the Kaepernick uh, uh, fourth and whatever he – like we going to find some way to lose. The Marshawn Lynch run – <laughs> it, it just make you question. It just make you question. Like, what did we do? <laughs> what can we do to make it right <laughs> when stuff like yeah. that happened, man? <laughs> I couldn't be no fan, bro. If that was my team, but uh, Jason, go ahead because I already know. I know what's your favorite picking, but what would you give your team? And all that? Uh, I would, I would probably give us a honestly like an A minus. I think we we filled in a lot of gaps that we needed to fill. Um, I absolutely love the Nate Wiggins pick. Mm-hmm. Day one starter can shut down one side of the field. I like the uh, the boy from Washington to tackle. Uh, Ra- Rosengarten. I think he, mm-hmm. he got like 700 snaps last year, zero sacks allowed. And uh, the wide receiver from North Carolina that they tried to keep out of football for half the year. Absolutely love that pick. I think he's going to be able to make an impact. Because that's really what we need. Uh, we need some more firepower. Man, we need that, that third receiver to just go out there and just get us some, some dog yards. We're going to be all right. You go ahead, T. Oh, man. Uh I was kind of disappointed. I give him probably yes. a B minus. <laughs> a B minus or like a C plus, man. Like I, I didn't get to see no fireworks. Usually in the draft, uh, since John Lynch took over, we've been seeing like a lot of trades up and uh, fireworks on draft day. We didn't get that. Our first pick was Ricky Pearsall out of Florida. Uh, I haven't. I didn't watch too much Florida football last year because that's not what I want to do with my life. Um, <laughs> but I know he made an amazing catch, and I'm hoping that he didn't get drafted uh, off of that. I don't know. I watched C.J. Stroud say that um, he was the pick that he wanted, actually. And a Ricky, lot of Ricky say, nice. I ain't going to lie. Ricky nice. Yeah. I, I'm, not, I'm not – like I said, I ain't watch a lot of Florida football, so I ain't going to pretend <laughs> like I did. Uh, but it was a confusing pick because you had the IU trade kind of looming. And then on draft day, it was talks of Debo getting traded too. So we tra- so we draft a receiver who can do multiple things. So I was thinking like maybe this is like insurance for the trade. Uh, but then there were some other receivers on the board that I like better, uh, like A.D. Mitchell maybe. I mean, uh, yeah. But I don't know, man. It just – it didn't – I don't know what the plan was now. I don't know. You put this guy at a third receiver now. Now they're saying that Debo and are you going to stay, so – if you put him at a third receiver, it may be dangerous with the speed he got, a lot faster than Jennings. Um, I wanted to see us address the O-line. We did that in the later rounds. We ended up picking up Mustafa out of Vanderbilt. I don't know. We When I watched Vanderbilt play, he was knocking heads off. I mean, but, you know, it's always that one Vanderbilt. It's always one. 
<laughs> uh, so maybe he'll fit in there too. Uh, we need a safety. I saw them do rumors about picking up Jamal Adams, which would be I, when we had our free agency episode. Y'all know I I kind of petitioned for us to get Jamal Adams, so if we can end up pulling that off. That'd be amazing. But yeah, it's just a confusing draft for me, man. Good players, but like I don't know what the direction is for uh, behind picking those for that. What you got for me, Dave? Well, I mean, the first pick we was at, we was able to catch uh, was Kamari Lasseter from Georgia. I mean, that's a pretty pretty weird pick to me. We are already cool in the cornerback position for me, in my opinion. Plus, he didn't really put up that many like crazy stats last year or whatever. So we just got to see what that develops into. I do like the uh, Blake Fisher uh, pickup, the old lineman from Notre Dame. That was a really good pickup. We need somebody to protect uh, my boy, you know, at left tackle. You know what I'm saying? We need need somebody to protect Shroud because, you know, that's our prize possession. So, um, I, third round, we ended up getting uh, Kalen Bullock out of USC. That was a pretty good good pickup, man. He's a safety. Uh, I feel like we needed to, like, fill that gap in. I don't understand why we uh, got another tight end in the fourth round. From Ohio State case over, but uh like I said, we we pretty good at that position. And then I like the linebacker Jamal Hill we picked up from Oregon. We just filled in a lot of gaps, man. Like uh just filled in a lot of spots, man, where we needed to fill them in, man. I mean, I, I give them like a B minus. There's too many B's going out in this uh this draft grade. <laughs> we gotta be well, a little more Well, <laughs> I'm gonna be nope. honest with you. Oh, it wasn't no, it wasn't no A plus, but it was damn showing sure A. <laughs> it was damn showing sure A for us, and I, that's not even being biased, uh, because uh, a lot of the uh, NFL experts was giving us A's, A minus at the uh, lowest, because of course Jaden is a uh, good quarterback. And then we already have weapons with uh, Terry. McLaurin, and then we got uh, Austin Eckler in uh, free agency, which was kind of shocking to be honest <laughs> that we even got him. I want he wasn't even on my radar, and we got him. And we just gonna keep on uh, building. Then we got the uh, D tackle out of uh, Illinois, Newton. When I say you, bro, if you watch the highlights of that boy, oh my god, he like right down there with them uh, Texas boy with sweat in them. And Murphy, like he is really a disruptor. So having him, Deron Payne and uh Jonathan Allen, trust me. I I can't uh pronounce uh, his first name, but uh I know I learned it because I'm gonna be hearing it a lot when uh he be making these sacks and stuff. But he is like big and he's fast. But uh I I love that draft. Finally, we got new management. Thank God we got rid of Dan Snyder because hopefully we get a new stadium very, very soon. So I'm loving everything right now. And hopefully we can change this name very, very, very soon so we can change this old Wario logo because I'm tired <laughs> of looking at it. <laughs> That's all I look like, man. It's just like the Wario logo, man. Now, outside of y'all team, what was y'all favorite um, pickup? Uh, from another team outside of your team. Oh, uh, I say probably my favorite one was the Bears uh, getting Roma Duze. Mm. Uh, not often you see like a team draft their court, a quarterback and a receiver in the first <laughs> round, uh, especially when you know they probably was already set at that with them. You know, you got Caleb. Then the receivers that they signed in the offseason, uh, you kind of figured they were setting up, set there too. But I mean, you get him a receiver that he can grow with, and I think Roman Duze is one hell of a receiver. Uh, so that was mine. The other one probably be Lad McConkey actually going the second round. I think he went to the Chargers. I think I think Lad McConkey is a first round receiver. I'm but, surprised. Yeah. I'm surprised he made didn't make it in the yeah. first round. I, I think he's gonna have first round productivity. He, it just looks like he's gonna play for a long time. Pick I up think, a lot of third downs. 
I wish they still had Keenan Allen than they had Lad McConkey. I thought that would have been that would have been scary. Yeah, that'd be my two man. Those two receivers going. Mm -hmm. My favorite pickup was worthy going to Kansas City. Mm. Like rich get richer, man. My Texas boy going to KC, man. That's crazy. He got he got Patrick Mahomes throwing to him. That's gonna be real dope to see. You know they're gonna utilize the speed, and you know, so the are, they? <laughs> are they? Are they? We'll see. Yeah, no, no, I'm, I'm, no, I'm just saying, are yeah. they? And they yeah. definitely about to use that. They're gonna utilize the speed like crazy, man. It's gonna be, it's gonna be fun to see them this shit on the field. You, you think they're gonna give them that ninety nine on Madden for speed? Man, they gotta give them something. Close <laughs> to it. They ain't gonna give them a ninety nine, but they definitely gonna. Well, I mean, what can you say? He broke the he broke the combine record, didn't he? Yeah. So that's why I, I that was my only thing. I said they don't give him that. This game is already capping already. I'm like, you break a record, like I don't know what Tyreek speed is. More than likely, it's a 99. So his definitely should be up there. Yeah, it should be up there mm-hmm. right? for sure. I would say uh, my my favorite pick, and I guess I'm a little biased, a little bit of Bama bias, honestly, is Jace McClellan going to the Falcons. Mm. Jace McClellan is a talented running back who just really wasn't properly used at Bama. He can really do it all. He can block. He has elusivity above average. If he gets in front of you, not going to run him down. And with the other weapons that they that they have rotating him and Bijan is gonna be something nasty. I thought you was about to say Jermaine Brady. What you got for me? I don't me? like him, but I, don't... I I ain't really have a favorite. I was just disappointed overall that there was no HBCU picks. Uh, I think again. And why I'm saying that, I'm not above a – I don't even think it's a conspiracy, but I think when they saw the energy going toward um, Jackson State and just people are being excited by HBCUs and they was landing Travis Hunter, I feel like folks behind the door got together like, all right, let's put an end to this. Let's devalue everything about going to play sports at HBCU. So – I paid attention to that, and I just – I wasn't a fan because there were some really good guys <clears throat> uh, at a lot of different schools, most notably um, South Carolina State had some dogs up there. Jack State still had one or two. FAMU had some, and, you know, they left them on the outside and then snatched them up with those uh, – uh, um, those uh, what you call them? When they signed the undrafted signing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. So hopefully, I, hopefully the guys get in there and make some noise. But that's that's just how I feel. I feel like they did that purposely. I think we all agree on mm. that. I think it was. I think we all agree on that for real. For real. Oh, I forgot. Uh, he's not my uh favorite pick because he didn't get picked. But you saying that I forgot his name. Uh, out of uh North Carolina, Drake uh, May. Mm, no, nah, North Carolina. Uh, Central. Oh, oh, ah, uh, nah, I can't. Think nah, of I forgot his name, but he played uh when he played against Prime and them in the uh, uh, Celebration Bowl. I was like, man, this boy is a dog at this quarterback, man. <laughs> mm-hmm. But uh, he got uh, injured in that uh, HBCU uh, All Star game. Uh, I'm gonna get. It. I'm gonna uh, look it and up. See, I don't there. even know if they had the HBCU combine again, like they did. Yeah, I hadn't heard nothing about it. Mm-mm. Huh. Yeah, I don't I think that. they did because it was promoting heavy mm. last year. Yeah, yeah, it was because I'm like at least one player. I'm like, come on, man, you couldn't find one, just one player out of all these players. Like, eh, I guess. But hey, what do I know? Yeah. But easily, um, I think one of my uh favorite picks is definitely uh Kool Aid going to the Saints. I was just like. Man, this is just a steal at this point. The uh, type of production that they can get out of him. They got a first-round talent in the second round. 
surprise he but i think it was just that uh him getting surgery on his foot that made him drop because he's easily a first round talent and you get to play on the uh opposite side of marshawn Lattimore, which is oh my god you ain't even got to be the number one you can be a, a good number two and he's easily the best press corner in the whole draft so once he uh gets healthy i think he should definitely be ready before a uh, training camp so Sky's the limit for him. I'm rooting for him. Definitely happy for him. Well, according to the NFL.com, they did. They had the HBCU combine, and they got a mm-hmm. highlight video of the best of it on the NFL.com website, but they still didn't materialize into any picks, which is yeah. – but, but, guys, did y'all watch that HBCU bowl, man? That, that's, that's, bowl what game? Was, that's what yeah. I was talking about. Yeah, I, my bad. I had to step up. <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. You good. But the HBCU ball game, man, it was low scoring. It was a lot of it was a lot of good defense. You know what I'm saying? It was a lot of great defense displayed, but the offense was like, man, it, it was crazy. You know what I'm saying? So, I mean, I think that that kind of hurt a, a few of the grades on, on some of those guys or whatever that was trying to, you know, come into the league and get drafted from the HBCU standpoint. Plus, you know, that whole prime debacle, man, it just – it was too soon. You know what I'm saying? Man, why, you, why you call it a debacle? Man, because <laughs> when he left, man, I just feel like it was too soon. And just everything that was going on around the time shed a bad light upon HBCU sports. I feel like with uh, his stuff getting stolen and, you know, the way he left, you know, the money issues and all that stuff, it just was a bad exit, man. Feel like it was too soon. Um, it it was it wasn't it wasn't perfect at all. Yeah. But um, I think he I I think he did what he could do in the time. Right. And I was mm-hmm. feeling the way because I'm an HBCU grads. So I was feeling the way. But he said the one thing that made sense, and I've dropped it ever since he said it. Um, so if you want to bring in top tier players, right? you've got to be able to coach them up. So you're going to need top tier coaches. And he was like, I'm straight y'all. Like I'm good on money and payment, but I got to get my coaches paid. Mm -hmm. Like if you want top assistants, which are at a premium right now, you got to be able to pay them and you can't have them hanging around for 150 K salaries. You know what I'm saying? So once he said that, and I looked at it from a business and took the emotion out of it, I was like, yeah, you gotta go get that money. So he make a lot of sense. Yeah, yeah, because we sure had a uh, argument about it on here, yeah. like when it happened. But that that was one of the main things I said. I have never in my life heard a head coach taking money out of his own pocket to pay That's his true. assistance. That's true. So that tells you a whole lot about uh, Dion's character right there alone right. to take his money out of his own pocket to pay his assistance. And but, like I uh, said, I ain't mad at Dion, man. It's just well, you're not mad at him no more. Let's get that right. Just, not mad. Just, <laughs> it's he was the upset. situation, oh, man. He was, it's he just was how pissed. it happened, man. I feel like it was too soon. Yeah, bro. It was no other way, man. I'm like, yeah, hey, it, 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 was, it wasn't. It wasn't. It wasn't gonna saying? last, probably, especially when he started winning. Um, right. but uh. Thankful to the to that brother man for showing us what it could be, you That's know what true. I'm saying? Like, and then people that ain't familiar with Jackson State, like I spent a lot of time down there beforehand. He benefited from Jackson State's culture because it's always been rocking. Yeah. Like, mm-hmm. Sonic Boom always been. They've always had the plaza and all that good stuff. So their energy with his energy, it was great, and it's still there. It's still Jackson State. They moved on, but. I guess what I felt bad about for the longest was the city of Jackson. Like they, yeah. you yeah. know, they never had that type of celebrity and that type of energy. And man, when you just drive around, bro, it feels hopeless in a lot of <laughs> like areas. I, I ain't making fun of them. I'm just saying yeah. like they, bro, I have, they've been through I, a lot. So mm-hmm. yeah. I'm about to say, if you didn't know, I'm about to say, of course, mm-hmm. I know you uh HBCU grad but the rest of us went to tuskegee so mm-hmm. 
So we definitely familiar Absolutely. with the HBCU culture. Definitely, <laughs> you can see you can see all these boys with these. And see, that's and you just made a good point. A lot of people don't be knowing that I graduated from Stillman. They know the Bama stuff, but see how even with getting that Bama money, I'm still able to help a lot of HBCUs, and that's how I know Dion can still help the that's HBCU true. culture from Colorado. Mm-hmm. And that's what he said when he uh got there. He said, I'm so, still going to help him. So, so because yeah, he's he's double HBCU. He got his degree from Talladega, which most folks <laughs> oh, yeah. don't know. Yeah, yeah. So he he's double down. So hopefully we, you know, he'll still do good things. I I guess my question always been for the Dion situation is um well, first of all, like I I never expected him to stay there long term. Like from the minute he got the job, so I guess I wasn't surprised when he left, and I wasn't upset that he left. You know what I mean? Um, yeah. So my question has always been: Is like, do you think that he knew going in that his path was going to be to leave uh, when he did, or that early, or even to leave? Period. Or just did he just like get there and realize the culture? Like he said, "Oh, I can't pay my assistant coaches. Oh, I'm getting my stuff stole." Uh, do you think those things weighed on his decision, or or he, he just already knew before he got there? It's like, yeah, I'm just, this is just a path to some some bigger. No, I, th- I think it was a little bit of all of it. Uh, he yeah. he knew what the money was before he signed the contract, right. so that couldn't have been a surprise. Um, but I think he wanted to see if he could win at you know at that level at the D one level. And uh, but he all he ain't lacking confidence. We know that. So he believed that he was going to do great things. And that that type of energy just contagious. And uh, they went. They won. He couldn't get it done in the in the uh, uh, celebration bowl two years. But uh, it was a great run for him. And now I know he believes that he could do it at, at Colorado. And for those first three weeks, he was doing it. <laughs> yeah man and trust me it was must see tv and i think everybody in the world was watching that colorado state versus colorado game which yeah, was i would never i know for a fact never again in life i will ever be up for a colorado state game ever again <laughs> ever i am pretty Definitely. confident about that that was easily one of the most entertaining games <laughs> all year so, yeah, man, I'm so glad you brought up that point about the uh, HBCU players not getting drafted, man, because it's almost a crime shame, man, because it's really talented players that uh, come out of uh, HBCUs, especially, like, maybe not as much um, back in the day because a lot of the, some of those same players that would have went to uh, other D1s went to HBCUs like the Gremlins and a and Tusky, the Howards, the Fams, all that. Like, it's it's a Robert Mathis out there. You got a, a Shat Leonard out there. It's, it's it's guys out there. You just got to take that chance on them. So, hopefully, we can get get back there one day. But we'll see. I'm not sure because it's it's definitely an agenda out there. So, I mean, he he did put on for HBCUs to a point where. I remember his first year at Jackson State, no HBCU players that got drafted. He made a big deal about it. He was saying, you know, uh, we got to make a change this next year. Something's got to happen. I think one of his players ended up signing an undrafted uh, rookie free agent contract that year. But then the second year, he actually got, like, one of his linebackers signed or something like that. And uh, I think to, like, the Detroit Lions or something. So, you know. Uh, you talking about uh, Justin Houston. Yeah, 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 yeah. Mm-hmm. So, you know what I'm saying? I mean, he, he did set out mm-hmm. a mission. And I think a couple of HBCU players got drafted that year, probably like five or six of them. So, you know. I, I don't I don't think they were drafted. You think they just signed? No, no. Yeah, they. I think they just signed. I think the only one that I can think of, if I'm not mistaken. I think got drafted. You sure? Yeah. I, I think it was oh, the only one that got drafted. I forgot his name. I know his last name, Bolden, because I was about to say Rico Powers. It could be Isaiah Rico Bolden. Powers. There you go. Yeah. And he got drafted by the Patriots. He, I think that was the, the only, only one. one. Yeah, that's what I said. I thought he was the only one. He was the only one. And that's crazy by itself. I'm like, come on, man. I know it's one more person. 
And the guy that I was talking about that uh went to uh, North Carolina Central was uh Davis uh Richard. Yeah, uh, that was probably one of the toughest boys I had seen play football in a long time at quarterback, man. Like, but he's fine. And I don't know if he signed anywhere. I haven't seen anywhere that uh he signed, but I think he a diamond in the rough. If somebody take a chance on him. I got that boy's autograph. Who was it? Exactly who you just called out, David. Oh, oh, for real? Man, look at you, man. As soon as you call, <laughs> that's just crazy. Like, I mean, was, hey, man, you're getting good on them cards, man. I'm going crazy with it, man. It really does just kind of show that they don't value the HBCU athlete at this point. So, I mean, they may have to go the XFL route, you know, whatever, the UFL, whatever it's called right now. Mm-hmm. To shine there in order to actually go get an opportunity in the NFL, but I think my fault. No, okay, no, you're you're fine, you're but I think that that I that's what I love league for because I think it's just like a minor league for like the NFL, and mm-hmm. it's in the springtime, so you get to showcase. Ain't nothing on but like playoffs and and uh baseball. So yeah, we get to catch you, and then they be like, oh, okay. It's actually good football. Yeah. It, it yeah. is good football. And then, oh, I forgot um, the Cowboys, uh, Kent Returner. Like, he's shining that. And he ended up Turpin. making it to the Pro Bowl the next year. Yeah, yeah. come on, Tony sh- Turpin. And, mm, uh, thank you. And then, of course, their kicker, uh, who really can't miss. And now they're breeding up another kicker that's uh, playing for Michigan uh, in the UFL. I've uh, – hosted i haven't missed many stallions games here and then when they were hubbing here i got a chance to just walk like i live half less than half of a mile away from the stadium so i would just go over and just watch the games man there's some really talented players out there and it's crazy that more of them not getting shot because they already ready some of them have already been in the league and you know trying to get back in there but like you said there's some hbcu guys around there uh, but that UFL is it's seriously good football, yeah. man. For real. It's good football. You know, you know what I love about it is the the production value on TV. Because we oh, had yeah. like little leagues before, and they just like you can tell watching it on TV that is uh, this is not they don't have the funds or whatever. Yeah. They but, but, yeah, UFL's not like that, man. It's they they have more views and stuff than the NFL with the drone footage on there, and then the mm-hmm. transparency from the refs. It's just like I love it. Yeah, you get to hear the play calls, all kinds of stuff, man. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you get it, and they talk about transparency. It's real transparency because you could hear the referee and back in the booth, like talking about what he's seeing. Like it plays over the loudspeakers in the stadium. <laughs> so oh, it's uh, yeah. yeah, it's it's very dope. Then they got a uh, chip inside the ball, so they don't have to bring out the chains. They literally put up the yellow magnetic line to show you how close. You were to the first, like it's it's some amazing uh stuff going on. But y'all remember the name? What um Jake Bates. Remember that name, man. That's a kicker from uh the Michigan Panthers. Dude cannot miss. <laughs> and he, he went viral the week one game. So they put him in to kick a 64-yard field goal to win the game. So buddy kicks the ball but they call the time out to ice him he split it like had room to go so he had to line up kick it again it went even further even straighter so he just kicked mm. casually kicked two 64 yard <laughs> field goals back to back he hasn't missed one and um you know the detroit fan they play in the lions stadium so they, <laughs> the michigan panthers fans in detroit like please keep this dude man mm-hmm. but he legit and it's, it's crazy, man, because we want to – I think everybody wants to see Detroit, destroying do that. You know what I'm saying? Uh, mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. They like, hey, and he just – do you think he was doing too much, man? Like, when he got injured Ooh. on that play, man, trying to trying yeah. to uh, tackle old buddy. Oh, yeah, yeah. on the uh, – after the kick celebration thing. Yeah, yeah. definitely. Y'all look they like, yeah. He was tripping, man. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He, He's just an athlete. He couldn't turn it off. Yeah. I was about to say, man, he's he making a lot of money. He he ain't hurt. He, he'll be all right. But, yeah, man, I'm just glad he got his opportunity, man. And, yeah, I and, hope his career is not over, man. Hopefully we can see more of him in the right. UFL next year. I th- and then 
one of the things I still haven't seen it yet. Uh, cause I, I ain't gonna lie to you. I haven't been, um, I've been so caught up with the playoffs and the draft and all that. Uh, the new kickoff rule is coming from the uh, UFL, right? Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. See, that, that's it's, the one thing that I like about what the NFL, what they is, do. Hmm? Is it in the UFL or was it in the XFL? Well, I'm talking about like the lead now. I don't know. Yeah, the XFL and that. Yeah, I don't think the UFL uses that kickoff. Oh, okay. But the thing that I like. But it came that from what they right? what they do, like you see it, and then the NFL may adapt to it because you're right. like, hmm, this is a good idea. See, the chip in the football may be a thing coming in the NFL, maybe yeah. next season. Yeah. But I I still haven't seen, like I said, I haven't seen the uh the uh kickoff rule or whatnot. Some people say it's dope. I just didn't like how they explained it to me. I just like. No, this sounds well, stupid. You, yeah, y'all talking about the rule that was in the XFL, but they didn't bring yeah. it over to the UFL. Oh, okay. On the, uh, on the kickoff thing. That's why. They I did understand. keep, they don't kick um, extra points. You either uh, go for a one point, two point, or three point play. And I think it's at the two yard line, the five yard line, the 10 yard line. Um, and then they got, you know, different overtime rules and just different stuff. So basically, ain't no lead really ever safe. Yeah. In the UFL, right. that's one good right. thing about it. But um, uh, the old XFL was actually the first uh, ones, I believe, in 2001 to use that yellow line, first down line on TV. And, of course, oh, okay. the NFL used that. They picked it up. Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh, man, you just put me on game. I didn't even know that. <laughs> Yeah, we didn't well, we, I mean, we've always, we always get a team yeah. in Birmingham in the spring league. So I've been like yeah. forced kind of to follow it, whether it was AAF, XFL, USFL. Mm-hmm. Um, and then with this version of the USFL and UFL, I actually had a chance to host uh, two of the games, been down on the field. They give me a season pass. So I'd be up in there, man. I'd be, I'd be watching. And then I'm so glad you said that. I just started learning this thing, uh, the Mandela effect. Like, has this always been there type thing? That's what I just felt like. Damn, man, that's like a Mandela effect right there. I was like, didn't the NFL? I've heard that? that term before, but I'm you not have sure. to. The only reason I got it because I watched like 10 shorts in a row. Yeah. And trust me, if you watch them, you will understand, like, okay, this is what they mean. Because I didn't understand, like, uh, like the Bernstein Bears. It, it, yeah. Like, like the fruit, like the fruit loop. Uh, it was something about it. Was it always felt like this, or did they yeah. just change that? It's That's really that all been there, and you ain't noticed. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, it's like, like when a whole whole bunch of people uh got have one opinion or remember something certain one certain way, right. and but right. it didn't go that way. Like Sinbad being Sinbad a genie movie. movie. Yeah, exactly. yeah. Yeah, yeah, the Kazan movie. That that's Kazan. a prime example right there. Yeah. A lot of people was like, yeah, I remember Sinbad in the. Uh, in a movie where he was a genie and he came out, he's like, I never, I never did that. At That's what I'm saying. <laughs> like, I always remember, I, like, I, I never seen that. I was like, is this fake? Yeah. <laughs> like, the Fruity Looms, like, did they always have the uh, fruit there? Not fruit, it, yeah, Fruity Loom, did they uh, always had the fruit on there? Or was it always spelled out? It just, that's that's pretty much the Mandela effect. Yeah, I was like, bro, what is the Mandela effect? It's, it's named it, it's named after Nelson Mandela because it's a large group of people that believe he died in a prison in South in prison. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like they really believe it. Like people say, like I watched it on TV. I you know I remember it happened, and it's a it's a very large group of people that remember it. Yeah. And then you know how you're saying? No, Second. that's like. 92, 91, right well, now. Yeah, it was in the 90s or some shit. Yeah, but I'm just saying, you know how weird that is? Because it's just like, this was a big thing of him getting out of prison. So how right. do you think that right. he died in prison? That's well, what I, I know when he got out of prison. That was a big deal. But, yeah. that's what I'm saying. but that's how, how would you... He died in prison was weird. Yeah, that, that, that's what make it weird to me. Because I was like, yeah. how do you... I was it's born so... in 91, so... So many people believe it. They named the phenomenon yeah. behind it. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and I know uh, it is a truth. We went down a whole rabbit hole. Of the, dude, that, that was a real good conversation right there because I didn't even think about like the uh, HBCU players and stuff like that. Then the uh, new rules that's coming to the NFL. One thing before we uh 
move on is the uh, the uh, the eighteen game playoff. Not not eighteen game playoff. Eighteen game season. I absolutely hate that proposal. They, I, I pray to God that they don't do. It. I was mad when they went seventeen, but they said they're gonna uh, just have two preseason games. Thank God, because I hate preseason. But eighteen games is just too much. That's what uh, Roger Goodell said he's trying to do, and I think it's stupid. I'm, I'm, I'm one of those guys. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I, I agree, but I think. Um, Everything just getting more expensive. They're paying players yeah. more TV, getting more TV revenue. money. So they just like, you know, let's just keep pushing. Let's just see how far we can get it. How much money can we squeeze out of the situation? But the best thing about it, I'm, I'm complaining now. But we do get an extra week in football. <laughs> and then we get an extra week in fantasy, too. So, yeah. So I may win this year. So we'll find out. But uh, moving on to the good old NBA playoffs so far. And, of course, probably easily the best series, the Nuggets and Lakers. Easily was the best series. Um, I have no idea who's going to come out the East. It's just really a toss-up. I, I believe it's going to be one of the uh, – Best playoffs we've seen in a minute, especially with this Minnesota Timberwolves and Nuggets matchup, is going to be all eyes going to be on that series. But I still got the Nuggets in five or six. But what's y'all thoughts on the playoffs so far? This is, uh, I forget the year, but I just remember I probably tweeted it that uh, I remember a year in the playoffs where it was like the changing of the guards when uh, yeah. Steph Curry and them, you know, had kind of advanced. And I was like, dang, this looked like the, the young guys taking over the league. And that was a correct analyzation. And I think I'm, we're seeing that this year too. Um, LeBron just got bounced. Steph not even in it. Um, KD just got bounced, and you know, it's, it's a bunch of new guys like Orlando. I just, just watching them like, damn, they good, but ain't, ain't really no stars or nothing did, like did that. Did you even but, know they had a black head coach? Did not, <laughs> I, didn't. I, I, I didn't know they, until they until they put uh coaches of the year candidate, but my fault, yeah. Okay. So it may be like a 12, 14 year cycle that these things go in, and that's uh, the, you know, that's that's cool, but uh, yeah, the Nuggets, man, they they looking unbeatable. Um, you know, they'll get challenged by some folks, but I think the Nuggets probably repeat. Yeah, man, that's exactly what I was about to say. Did we just witness changing of the guard, uh, mm -hmm. the ushering out of the old players? Pretty much everything you said, uh. I mean, it, what makes it worse is is I I don't see a path for these players to get back and win. Um, because you already got K. It's not like KD was on a bad team. Well, I ain't gonna say a bad team, but like he had help. You got Bradley Beal, you got Devin Booker, you got Brun down there playing with AD. Like this, this wasn't a case where they just didn't have the talent. It's, it was a case where they just got outplayed by by these young cats, and uh, it's happening across the board. In the east, in the west, you got Giannis finna go home. Um, of course, you know, you got, they got injury situations there, but yeah, I mean, I, I think it's time to find you a, a new team if you've been <laughs> if you've been uh with these with these old cats for a minute, man. Uh you got the Knicks, uh a lot of small market teams, a lot of teams you hadn't heard from in a minute, just that had been just stockpiling first round draft picks, and now uh those boys grown up. <laughs> and they're not taking no for an answer, man. Uh, I I like still probably like Denver. Just, I'm, I'm always gonna pick a team that's got continuity. They've been together the longest. They play basketball like they've been together for a long time. Reminds me a lot of what the Spurs were doing when they were dominant. Ball just moves on its own. That's very tough to beat in the playoffs, especially when you got a big man that's skilled like that. Mm -hmm. um, 
they're gonna run into us. They gotta gotta go through Minnesota, man. And hey, Ant is trying to put his stamp on his league. There's a lot of people saying he's the face. I don't think that's quite true yet. Not not but, yet. But but he's definitely he definitely has championships. So if 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 he puts rings on his fingers, man, you have to look at him differently. You have to look at him differently. Somebody said something about his shoe being one of the top selling shoes, signature shoes of players in the league. I didn't know that. When I saw it, I was like, I would never wear that. But I had no idea that his shoes were selling that much. <laughs> so shout out to him, man. And shout out to the young cats across the board, man, putting all these old guys on notice. Like, hey, it's our league now. You scoring 30, I'm scoring 35. It's as simple as that. And then your sons got swept, so. Man, I don't, I, didn't, I wasn't talking about that. I wasn't, <laughs> talking about young cats. I, I wasn't gonna let them uh get past that. But we're talking about the, the same, young cats, man. But but at the, but at the same before before you go to hey, my fault. Uh, okay, well, you good? The, the only the only difference between you can have like all these top guys in the playoff. This is what history has never changed with this. You can have the LeBrons and all those guys, but the playoffs is really where your role players get their shine on. That's true. Like you need them to they they're gonna make or break a game. Like look at uh D'Angelo Russell. It, the Lakers probably could have won at least three games if he just plays to his normal standard. And I'm a Lakers fan, but I just wanted to blow up the whole team anyway. <laughs> but I think, it, I think it also proves a little bit of like you you really can't just microwave a team and win in the NBA playoffs. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like you you just can't throw together a team. And I, and as much as the young guys are talented, you do have to keep in mind like because they were drafted, you know, and they've been putting these teams together for a while. A lot of the young teams are the more seasoned teams as far as playing together. Mm-hmm. Uh, whereas these old teams are just they just trying to link up, make championship runs, man. And it, it's it's just not that easy. Like you can't. You can't do it. <laughs> that chemistry matters, man. I don't think yeah. a lot of folks take in uh, account like that chemistry matters, and you playing with uh, these guys for years, and it's you can see how they gel. That's why Denver just balling. But what's your thoughts on the uh, playoffs, Jay? Uh, I think well, you know, like like you guys have mentioned, it is a, a changing of the guard. And I, but you know, to take it a step further, I think the way that you actually change it is by one of these young guys planting their flag in the sand and winning the championship. Right. And to be honest, like, I feel like this is the year for that to happen. Yeah, we can see that. And if it's going to be anybody, it might as well be the new face of the NBA, Anthony Edwards. He's a, he's a killer, likable, is already showing with shoes. He, the only people that hear behind in shoe sales is LeBron and Durant. He's exciting to watch, and, like, he pushes them to wins. The moment has never been too big for for him since the moment he got in the NBA. He lives up to all the expectations. And I think, you know, how styles make fights. And as as good as Denver is, Minnesota is a damn good team and can beat anybody in the league on any night. So I wouldn't be surprised if it go to seven, and I'm, I'm definitely taking Minnesota in seven. Okay, so mm. you said you said something about it earlier on Facebook, but I said, like I I'm said, I'm staying on business. I said, <laughs> I said we're gonna talk about it on the pod, man. I that's not a I, bad pick. It's I not, but I I I just Chris about to hate me out. You know, no, I on I love Ant, man. I think Ant is a straight dog. The problem where it's gonna lie. At, is Carl Anthony Town. I think Carl Anthony Town's gonna have to have the uh, series of his life, and I don't think he gonna uh, play up to like how Anthony uh, Davis played up this seat. I mean, in this past series, I don't see him playing like that. I don't expect Rudy Gobert to uh, do too much. No, and so that that's where the problem lies. Yes. I know Ant gonna do his thing, but are those guys gonna do their thing? That's where the problem lies. Man, that's, a, that's a good point because Cat gonna have to guard somebody. Like, he, 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 he's gonna have to either guard Jokic or Aaron Gordon. He, he's he not gonna guard Jokic. They gonna definitely yeah, put. They gonna definitely put. Uh, but then who does he guard then? 
more I, like I think, gonna... I think y'all sleep on one team right now, man. That I think is gonna go all the way. That a lot of people sleep on, man. OKC, man. I think OKC is about to shock a lot of people this year. Mm-hmm. They got my boy Shea Gideon, man. Alexander, the boy is so cold, man. Mm-hmm. I, I I probably said his name wrong, Gilius. But uh, let's call him as GA, like everybody. Else. GA, baby. <laughs> I feel like NGA, man. I've been I've been rooting for these guys. I'm a big fan of uh Chet Holmgren, man. I've been on a, on a Chet Holmgren card, uh, you know, pool type thing, man. I, I really like Chet. He on his official rookie year. He's balling. Uh, I like Shea, man. I like their whole little setup, man. So it's a new generation. A, a young cat's coming out here, showing that uh they can knock out and eliminate the teams that we've been used to. So um, I think I really like – I like what they got going on. Okay, see, man, they dope. I hate that Zion, man, got swept like that and he got hurt. But it is what it is. Um, I feel like the Clippers are going to end up pulling it out over the Mavericks for some strange reason. I actually mm-hmm. like the Mavericks this year. But it's something about how the Clippers have been playing, man. You know, when you got Kawhi, Harden, and George, they need a ring. They need a ring, man. You know what I'm saying? I I said I'm so glad you brought because that's exactly what it, you saying. Uh, OKC, but I said, man, if Kawhi's healthy, okay. the Clippers are going to be a problem They're for a problem. somebody. And they this what Dallas and Clippers series is low key a great series right now. And oh, I yeah. think this can possibly go seven. I believe this can go seven. It's and definitely, definitely more, the most competitive. And, mm-hmm. and you're saying definitely you're saying seven. that uh, you're saying that OKC would beat the winner of this series. Um. Okay. So let let me go to this bracket real quick. So the winner of this series, right? Yeah, we'll the play, Clippers. We'll play OKC. Yes. Yes. I feel like OKC. OKC could beat the Clippers, and they could beat the Mavs. Yes. Yes, sir. I don't think they can beat the Clippers. If they, they they'll want Dallas before they want the Clippers. Okay, look, that's gonna be a tough matchup because of you know, hey, we got some veteran superstars. They they hungry, but OKC man, this team is is different, bro. The SGA this year is a different type of beast, man. Chet yeah, Holmgren, a- Chet Holmgren ch- trying to prove a point. He played every game this past season, coming off of that rookie injury season. He came back this season, played every single game of the season, balled out. You know what I'm saying? He got a point to prove, man. While think, everybody was talking about Wimby, he's in the playoffs balling. <laughs> well, both of them on two different teams. We got we got to give Wimby. We got to give Wimby some grace now. I love Wimby. Wimby. Just, I love Wimby, bro. I'm but uh, the only the only only thing I just come back on is man, I go by the history of the league, man. Them young teams like Chet, yeah, we saying he playing all these games, but history tells me when you get deeper into them rounds against them tougher teams, that's when you start to have them problems. Yeah, you're doing good in the first round. You got the advantage because, yeah, Zion's not playing. But when you start to uh, go deeper and deeper in them playoffs, them teams going to be ready for you. And we're going to see if you're going to uh, fold like a blanket or you're going to step up. So we're going to see. But they, like I said, the West is definitely being the West as it always been. But that East, I ain't gonna lie. Uh that Magic and uh Cleveland series. Yeah. yeah. Oh my god. <laughs> that 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 is a crazy series. The um, currently right now uh Philadelphia and uh New York going at it. Uh New York winning right now. I think if MB was a little more healthier, uh, this can possibly go six or seven game. But I think New York gonna close it out tonight. Um, the Celtics was gonna beat Miami from the get go, and it's unfortunate for uh, the Bucks going against the Pacers with everybody unhealthy. So it's it's gonna it's gonna be crazy, man. But before we get off this. I'm going to ask y'all, because since all the awards are out, I believe every last one besides Defensive Player of the Year and MVP, I think we already answered for uh, Wimby being uh, Defensive Player of the Year. Who you got, uh, Funny Man? Defensive Player of the Year? 
I yeah. Mean, this ain't biased. I just watched <laughs> my guy for the Pelicans. You know where I'm going with it. Oh, I mean, he. I just. I've just seen. Um. I just seen him D up too many positions, man. And uh, I'm talking about Herb Jones, by the way. Oh, of um, course I know. I've seen him D up the one through the five and do a great job. Like, he don't take no plays off. Um, Wimby is an alien, for sure. You got to give it to him. But Herb, if he play the type of defense I want to see play. Like, it's effort nonstop. Up and down mm-hmm. the court, man. So even if he don't get it, I think he should be in the running. And and even though he's not a finalist, one thing that a lot of folks need to understand, like his stats, like players like him, his stats, what he does is not going to show up in the stat not, book. Hmm. Not. He's he just, he, he just an ongoing headache for anybody. He's had some crucial steals in clutch games. Um, he just the type of player you want. If you can get three to four Herb Joneses on your team, the sky's the limit. And he kind of remind me of the uh of of like the the grindhouse grizz when I started following back in the you know 2012 to 2015, mm-hmm. when you had TA and them boys like that's just gonna it, relentless effort all day. Tony Tony Allen got him. Possibly be the most annoying defender I have ever seen. And I loved it. I loved every bit of it. Because him and Kobe was like pretty much iron sharp and iron, man. You got the best offense against the best defender. And that man, Tony Allen, just stayed on Kobe like all day. That was that was that was beautiful basketball right there. Man. Yeah. I love oh, it. Then, I, then that mofo used to sit when they used to come to Memphis. Hey, everybody used to play it because it was a, it was a smaller market team, man. And they used to, the all stars used to sit. I drive three hours over there and don't even get to see who <laughs> I want to see. So, it is what no, it is. and thank God, that's the only thing I give Adam Silver uh, credit for, man. Like the guys have to at least play sixty five games to at least make these all NBA team because this low management stuff was getting out of hand. And nobody's not trying to pay these uh, high ticket prices to see their player and they sitting on the bench because they just saying, I'm tired. Like, what kind of sense does that make? Kobe rolling over in his grave off his nuts. got a phone full of pictures of all-stars just sitting on the bench in the field. (laughs) Like, they had to do something about that, man, because, like, the value was only going to go down. Like, I'm only going to be able to see this guy one time a year. Mm -hmm. And... He's and the ticket the prices reflect that player playing. Mm-hmm. Right. Because right. when when the Lakers play the Hawks, the tickets are four or five times as much as they typically are. And yeah. LeBron didn't didn't play in Atlanta for almost three years straight. Mm-hmm. Let that sink in right there. So we thank God, Adam Silver, for doing that. Because David Stern would have never went for that. <laughs> David Stern would have had them boys playing. Like, oh no, if you ain't hurt, you playing. I don't give a damn. But yeah, uh, earning and touching ankles himself. Like, you good. <laughs> <laughs> man, but since I got you on here, man, before I uh, ask you this uh top five, you know, since you're on here, I know how much you love college football. Mm-hmm. And what do you expect? From uh our Alabama Crimson Tide coming this upcoming season, because of course we seen I seen some disturbing news getting on the pod with uh Tony Mitchell putting his name uh-huh. in the transfer portal, which breaks my heart. Uh-huh. But uh, what you expect for us to do this season? Uh, I still think there'll be ten win. They'll be in the mix. Uh, we haven't. Lost a lot of talent. The the offense will definitely get upgraded. Uh, defense got some good pieces coming back, but I think Malachi coming back for another season was the biggest um, return on that side. Um, we still gonna be a tough out, man. I can't guarantee you know a natty, just because you know Saban was three years removed from that too. So 
Yeah. Uh, they're not easy to do. You got two more teams in the league now, but I, I still think we'll be a 10 win team. That schedule is actually very favorable. It's mm-hmm. tough, but it's favorable. And um, I think we'll be in the mix. It's, and then I don't want uh, this guy in the uh, top right corner to feel alone. He's the lone <laughs> Auburn fan up here who despises yeah. everything Yuck. Alabama. And I mean, <laughs> despises everything. It happens. <laughs> so, come on, Ted. Uh, uh, how you think those Auburn Tigers gonna look this year? Oh man! So you know I'm always realistic. I don't know. Uh, now, yeah, I got my boy. Uh, uh, my boy wide receiver. Shout out to Phil uh, for coaching up uh, Cam Coleman. I always give uh, Phil a shout out. But uh, yeah, I got him. Yeah, yeah, we got we got him. Uh, but he can't win it alone. Yeah. Uh, we were historically bad passing the football last year. Historically bad. Uh, and our quarterback hovered around 60%, a little over 60% passing. The thing about it is, the easy answer is, uh, well, we just need to uh, – we need a new quarterback. Uh, but – where the attempts going to come from? Um, because at that rate, if he had more attempts, he's a 3,000-yard passer. Um, so so there's something fundamentally wrong with how we played football last year. I didn't like it not one bit. Hopefully that's fixed. Um, one thing about Hugh Freeze, he's been pretty honest, you know, in his assessments of the team. So he's also said give him two more recruiting classes after this. So – Man, I can only go by his word. I don't know if you gonna get two more recruiting classes. Yeah, and I was just about to go there. I was just about to go there. Definitely. I don't know. Like that. Yeah, Is Auburn going to give him uh two more recruiting oh, classes? Yeah, you got to get the show on the road. He, I think, you know, honestly, if he doesn't put together a, a decent looking season with some hope for the future this year, man, that seat gonna get hot. Like it's if you y'all know, do that. If y'all do that, it's gonna be y'all gonna be feeling the effects of that for the next twenty years because y'all are gonna be branded as a school that yeah. runs coaches out of town. That, yep. That's and very true. Nobody yeah. gonna want to go there. That's very true. That's very true. After having such a great recruiting class, and I don't know, man. I I, I wish I had a better answer for you and tell you like, oh man, we're we're gonna be a ten win season. But realistically, man, just looking at it. I have to see it first. I have to see it. I'm still iffy about the quarterback position myself. So, and then uh, it's my fault. Nah, and if we weren't so bad last year offensively, uh, it's a it's a it's a wonder we won the games that we did, and we're competitive in the ones that we were. Mm-hmm. You look at how we operated offensively in those games. It's like, really, that that game was close. How did that happen? Um, so, yeah, coming off that. And then this year, yeah, we got Cam Coleman, but he can't do it alone. Um, so, yeah. And then uh, I think, oh my fuck, man, no, y'all, gotta, what? y'all gotta, y'all gotta stretch. <laughs> yeah. Late we got eight home games this year. <laughs> late September to late October, that's a stretch, bro. Arkansas, yeah. Oklahoma, Georgia, yeah. Missouri, Kentucky. That's a stretch, bro. Yeah. Yeah, because uh, last year I uh, called that big stretch that they had with LSU, Georgia, Ole Miss, and all those boys. I call that death row records because <laughs> how – because I said they'll be lucky to get one win. They got the last one that was against Mississippi State, but I didn't know Mississippi State was going to be so trash last year. But uh, – By that time, we had completely taken the air out of football. Yeah. We, we so were basically a service academy offense at that point. I, That's why I, it, it's so crazy. If y'all would have beat us in the Iron Bowl, man, I would I would have been depressed. And because it would have been like, dog, I already know y'all would have just said, as bad as our season was, that was worth it. Worth it. Mm-hmm. Oh, this and is thank, shout out to Isaiah Bond. Thank God. And Jalen Metro. Thank God. <laughs> My wife oh, still had I, I made I made post a reaction how I was because she was recording me, man. Cause I, when I tell you, bro, I couldn't believe it. Cause I was like, I said, 
I say, uh, like, bro, I couldn't believe it. I like, bro, did he really catch it? Like, I, I, I so gotta, I gotta ask you though, Tez. Like, as an Auburn fan, does that <laughs> frustrate you knowing that if they would just play the full season like they managed to play against Alabama, they could really be a great team? Uh, yes, it is frustrating. It is frustrating. It, it, it's not even just Alabama. It's a couple more games in, in the Georgia, season. Where yeah. You, yeah, you see the flashes. Georgia, they always play Georgia. You know, and, and honestly, I'm just be honest with you, I, I pick a lot of my teams in the playoffs by how we play them. You know what I mean? Yeah. When 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 Georgia, when, when, when it was the uh, SEC championship, Alabama, Georgia, I looked at how we played those games. Um, and I, I just kind of knew that. Alabama will win that game. Uh, just based on what you know, what I saw from the Georgia game. But yeah, like man, it's frustrating to see team your team capable. You know, you know that they can put a good product on the field. You've seen them do it. And then you know, we come out here against New Mexico State and just went to bed. <laughs> like it's just I it's yeah, it's frustrating. I, I don't understand. I don't understand how you cannot have that type of consistency in a football team, and, and it's there. So maybe it's messaging from the coaches. Maybe it's some. I I, I don't know what it is, man. To be honest with you, uh, culture. It's the culture. It, yeah, it could be culture. Mm-hmm. You, you're right. No culture. What, what, no what culture. He's oh, saying culture. culture. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> no, yeah. For sure. 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 For sure. Yeah. It what frustrates me is like. It seems like every time we get a coach at Auburn, he decides he wants to deviate from what he's used to doing. Like, it seems like the job makes people overthink it. You know what I mean? It's like, man, we, you freeze. We know about Cadillac, you. though, did Cadillac overthink it? Cadillac only had a small sample size of football. And I, would say, what, I would say y'all boosters have a lot to do with that. that well, is they don't still, they that is are still to involve. And, then, and Nick Saban was really the first coach that we had in a long time that wasn't about yeah. to play that booster stuff. He had like, that national like, championship coming in there, though. Yeah, but once once they got out the way and just became check writers, we yeah. were a, we you saw what a program could be. But I know for a fact, like y'all folks down there, are just way yeah. too hands on. I'm so yeah. I'm so I'm so glad you said that because. I don't know if it was you, Tez, or was it Nick that told me that since y'all the two biggest Auburn fans, that y'all was going to sign Kirby at one point. But I think you said something about the boosters messing it up or Auburn wouldn't let them do something. Yeah, that's the rumor. Like, uh, was going to sign Kirby and then the boosters pulled out of it. They didn't, they didn't want that to happen. You see? So they pulled the funding, you know, and once that happened. That shows you that that's showing the effect of it right now. You know, see you what know they're doing. Much, you know how much money you gotta have to literally play college football like it's Madden in real life, right? <laughs> and to be able to write checks and get coaches like that, that is a serious amount of disposable income, bro. Like, you know, oh my, like, God. that is that is an awesome analogy, by the way. <laughs> like, just they got some billionaire it. boosters, bro. I yeah. don't think Bama yeah. has one billionaire like booster, but they've learned like. Let's put in this equal amount, support yeah. this guy. Let's hire us a good manager and get out the way. Yeah. Yeah. And he has success too. So, like, that's easy to do when you, it's, it's a lot easier to do when the coach is winning. When it's, when the ship not going well, them boosters, that money, even if it's not as much as Auburn, but money starts getting short. Y'all are so like, impatient, bro. That, that's the problem with Auburn. That y'all is, are so impatient. That's got, I'm still pissed up. off how y'all did the uh, athletic director, how y'all just ran him completely out of town. Yeah, he, I, he was, we, he come was, on, man. Steven Wonder saw that coming. Yeah, yeah shout, I out, shout out to Alan Green. You know, I believe that was that y'all's first black AD. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, so anything, we, anything we are, down when, whenever, here whenever perfect. in doubt, just remember Auburn is in Robert E. Lee County. I was born there. That's the actual name of it. It's it's a different place down there, man. Yeah, yeah it yes, is. it is. Yeah, and that don't and that don't absolve Tuscaloosa at all. I'm just and saying. trust me, it doesn't. Yeah, and yeah. they they 
that's why it still tripped me out when I think it was 2018, 2017, I can't remember, when they had that clan uh meeting on like Auburn campus. But like the Auburn students didn't want it to be there, but they Oh, uh, that's when the uh the dude spoke. They, yeah, man, that uh, job yeah. was crazy, dog. That that was crazy. I ain't gonna lie to you. I was like, cause I know the I think the weirdest thing growing up in Alabama, man, was really if you had friends that were Auburn fans, they'd be like, Alabama is more racist than us. And I was like, that's still nothing to be proud about. Because they always said, they were, right. they, they if they anything, were like, we one and two. <laughs> right, right. right. <laughs> that's what I'm saying. It was yeah, just like, because we allowed uh, black students last to uh, come into the school and George Wallace uh, blocking them from coming in. But I was like, they can't hang that over our head no more because y'all literally in the 2010s got a clan meeting on Auburn's <laughs> campus. Like, that's dead now. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, so you you got the top five wife. It done knocked on the door three times. She the dinner's still hot. So I oh, know okay. y'all oh, probably yeah, not man. married oh, yet. Oh, oh yeah, my fault. This is this is uh this is the last one, but this is a uh, uh top five. Now I need your top. This is gonna be two, and you just give me off the top of your head your top five Alabama players ever, and your top five. Alabama players doing the saving era. Top five ever. I'm gonna go David Palmer, Derek Thomas, Cornelius Bennett. Uh, ooh, I'm going by positions here. Uh, I'm gonna save him. I'm gonna save him for the saving era. Um, they can be in both. Yeah, they can be in both. Nah, nah, nah. I don't want to do that. I won't do that. <laughs> Thank you for that. Um, I'm gonna say Ooh. Bobby Humphrey. Mm. And um I got I gotta show the line some love, man. Andre Smith. Ooh. That's solid. Mm. Now, now five now. during the saving air. Yeah. Rolando. Rolando McClain, that's my top guy. Um, hmm. Devontae uh, Smith, gotta have, gotta have him. Julio, um, QB position tough, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna have to go with, I'm gonna have to go with Tua, and hmm. um, somebody else. Uh, I'm gonna go Minka Fitzpatrick. There we go. Yeah. <laughs> Gotta throw Minka in there somewhere. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and to end the show, we just really let everybody just shout out uh their social media and all that. But I'm gonna let you uh go last and then we'll uh get up out of here. No, no, no. Let me go first. Oh know. yeah, well go <laughs> first. My fault. My fault, my fault, my fault. There it is. Uh funnymain.com. Wait, I never don't there we point right there. <laughs> Funny Main on all the apps, Snapchat, Instagram, Facebook, all that. And then that's the website, runtheball.com. 50% off right now, by the way, on all items. Definitely appreciate you, my brother, for coming in. Sorry for holding you up from the food. Nah, y'all good, well, man. Good good well, chopping up with the brother. But, you know, wives, here you're having too much fun. They got to stop that. <laughs> Trust me, we got – all of us are married up here, so we already oh, okay. know. okay. I thought y'all was some young college brothers. All right. Oh, no, yeah. man. I am about to say, Tim, <laughs> Jason probably be your age. Me and DeHaven probably the youngest because we born in 91. What was you mean, my age? You must don't know what my age is. I'm an 80s baby, like as in 1980. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. Tell me, you want me to tell your age, like 1981? <laughs> I, was, I was born in the 1900s. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's 81. Oh, yeah. I see the band now, so we good. Yeah, we there. You get it. Yeah. Yeah, but yeah, man. Well, well, your brothers are moisturized. You're looking good. I thought that was <laughs> oh, yeah, fresh out a few years ago. <laughs> oh yeah, man. You newly married, so like, mm. so man. Welcome to the club, my brother. Uh, appreciate you. Man, Hopefully, we can uh, do this again soon, man. Definitely appreciate you for coming up on Absolutely. the show. So man, absolutely, yeah. man. Hey, y'all, keep doing your thing, man. Let's do it again. Oh yeah, man. Hold it down. Oh, All right, y'all. Go yes, Take it easy, man. Yes, sir. Oh,
And what you got? You already me? know, man. We do this shit every week, man. It's your boy DJ Ghost Play though. Boy the Haven. Already. See you, you know. Hey man, hook them, baby. You already know it's coming for the SEC. You already know. Live and direct. UT gonna take over this shit. Man, get man, get that oh my God. stuff yeah. out of here, man. Get that man. Lame ass me. <laughs> hey, y'all funny, man. Yeah. <laughs> Tess, Tess, uh, you can give me a photo image right there. Hold on. Bam. Right there. Uh, for all your photography and uh, videography needs. Yeah. Hi, guys. <laughs> That's a part time instigator. <laughs> I didn't want to bring it up, bro. I was waiting for somebody to say something, bro. Listen, I mean, I enjoy starting the fire and then running away. You know? <laughs> I post Instagram and, and Facebook stuff, and then I don't check it for five or six hours just to kind of <laughs> let stuff build up, you know. But yeah, you can follow me on uh, everything at Jason Bernard Official. Uh, we got new shoes coming out. We got merch coming out, all kind of stuff going on. If you are in the Atlanta area, please go to the Universal Circus. We'd love to have y'all. So, um, but yeah, man, this was awesome, man. I, I really appreciate you letting me come on here every week, Brisky, for sure. Oh, yeah, man. Anytime. And as always, I'm Brinsky Shaw for the Shaw Shooters Podcast. We drop it every Wednesday, every single Wednesday. Make sure y'all continue to uh, support the podcast. Make sure y'all support these brothers, support their businesses, and also with the Haven working with the Atlanta Braves. We're going to make it to the skybox one day, ladies and gentlemen. We're going to be in the skybox. <laughs> in the skybox. I'm going to get my ring this year, man. Number one team in the MLB. You already know what it is. Eight you know, yeah, if the Braves do win uh, World Series, the Haven gets a ring, and he said he's going to give it to me. I appreciate you, brother, for everything that you do. Thank you for thinking about your homeboy. <laughs> but let me get the ring. You ain't got to say nothing. I know you said you was going to give me the ring, but you ain't got to say nothing about that. But like I said, uh, appreciate uh, everybody for showing love on the uh, show. Uh, definitely appreciate uh, Funny Man for coming up on the show. And we're definitely going to um, do more stuff in the future. But as always, I'm not going to even be mean this time and say nothing bad about Auburn. Yeah, yeah. I think we said we said we said enough about them. I, I'm, I'm gonna give him a pass this week. You guys, you guys are trying, but what? You upset, Jason? Man, I'm very upset. Oh, you are very upset, man? I'm I can't, very upset. Oh, my fault, man. Well, I can't upset Jason then. Fuck Auburn, roll tide, ladies and gentlemen.